Hey, welcome back for more Reddit stories, my friends. Today, we have a couple of tales from retail for you to enjoy. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's go. But I need formula for my baby. Are you sure? I've worked in a supermarket for 10 years. You get your share of Karens, and the only thing you can do is smile politely. But what I even hate more after an 8-hour shift and having to close up the supermarket were the customers who came in 5-10 minutes before closing and just do their shopping like no one wants to go home. There was a time that I was scheduled every Friday closing shift and pretty much every Saturday closing shift. The store closed at 8. We weren't open on Sundays then. Also, on Saturday, we had to take out all the cash drawers and manually count all the money. We could start doing this when all the customers had left and the front and back doors were locked. So customers coming in 5 to 10 minutes before closing time and taking their sweet, sweet time to shop were hated. Hated with passion. My shop had a procedure. We would barricade our entrance and turn our front door on only opening when people want to leave the store at about 5 minutes before closing. We would remind customers at a quarter to 10 to and 5 to closing time that the store was going to close and please go and pay for their groceries. Normally we had very few incidents. This one however is burned in my memory. See his colleague FM is formula man. It was a Saturday. As head of the cashiers for that night, I had the honor to make or break the day of our beloved customers. I had to deal with my fair share of Karens, male and female, and I just wanted to go home. So I followed the procedure. Ask one of my fellow money handlers to set the front door and stay there to handle any customer. At two minutes before closing time, a man comes running to the front door. My colleague asks what he needs and reminds him that the store is going to close and he won't have much time. He says he just needs formula. Since I was busy with a customer, she let him in. Guy gets a basket and goes into the shop. Since he said he needed formula, we thought he would be in and out like a roadrunner. Nope. No, because formula man didn't need the formula. At 5 past 8, formula man is seen at the cheese section of our store. Quarter past 8, our wine section. What the heck does he need that for? What kind of baby does he have? Several of my colleagues have gone to this man to get him to the counter. He scoffs, huffs, and says that he is a paying customer. My fellow money handler was the last one to go to him, and that's when he went too far. He yelled at her, cussing at her, and making a high school student cry. Now I am pissed. So I do what I always do in these situations. I take off my store shirt, put out the neat jacket I keep in case of emergencies, and put it on. You see, when you have the store outfit on, you are often seen as a lesser being. But behold, I changed my outfit and suddenly I look like management and my word is all powerful. The real manager sees this happening, pops out a huge grin and goes to the back and watch from the security cameras. So I done the magical outfit and go to the formula man. I tell him in no uncertain terms that the store has been closed for 15 minutes and he has been asked multiple times to go and pay for his things. He starts to huff and puff himself up like the big bad wolf. I'm a 5 foot 2 woman and people think they can intimidate me. I told him that he was only allowed entrance since he needed formula. So I gave him a choice. He could go now and pay for the things in his basket or I would take the basket from him, grab the formula he claimed to need so much and he could pay for that. He could choose not to do either and in that case security would love to make his acquaintance. Either way, he would leave. Now, he tried, oh boy, he tried to threaten and intimidate me, he failed. He left with his cheese and wine, and many threats to call corporate. The next week he came again, this time he encounters me at the door. What did he need? Formula. So I brought him to our service desk, went inside and brought out a single pack of every kind of formula we had, asked him which one he needed, he didn't say a word, and left. Don't mess with our closing time. Customer breaks his own windshield, but it's our fault? I worked at a houseware store a few years ago and ran the stockroom staff. We sold some flat packed furniture and had a backdoor pickoff for customers to load items into the car. 
The back of house staff had to help these customers and though very hardworking, most were quite introverted compared to the front of house staff. One of my guys loaded a 10 foot rug into the back of a long SUV. There would have been plenty of room for it if the customer was willing to remove one of his kid's seat and fold the chair over. But he refused. He was shopping alone. My guy propped the rug on top of the seat, running through the middle of the car. He warned the customer it would not be safe to have a kid in that seat until the rug was unloaded. Before closing the truck, my guy walked to the front of the car to see where the rug was in relation to the rear view mirror. He decided it was too close and turned around to move it slightly, but the impatient customer took that moment to slam the trunk shut. The rug pushed straight into the mirror, which punched through the windshield. The customer was furious and I had to go out there and be shouted at. The customer was insisting my guy damaged his windshield and he knew this guy wouldn't do that. So I pointed to our camera out there and threatened to bring up the tape. There was no tape. We would have had to get corporate involved and I have never seen them take the store side over a customer. Suddenly the customer admitted that he slammed the truck himself, but he still felt it was our fault the windshield was damaged. He threatened to sue the store for tricking him into smashing his own windshield. I had an awesome boss at the time who took our side to corporate. Pretty sure we lost the customer though. Stupid robbers made it easy for me and police. I've seen a lot of stupid things in my 40 years of customer service, but this one has to be the top three at worst. It was roughly 2005 and I was working the overnight shift at my local largest convenience store chain in the world. The police dropped by to advise me that a competitor about a mile away had been robbed some two hours earlier and an attendant pistol whipped. Perpetrators hit her with a handgun while robbing the place. I knew this attendant, maybe 5 foot, on a good day and 105 pounds soaking wet. There would not have been any need to treat her like that, so I was eager to help if possible. The police officer was able to give me a description of the persons of interest, including what they were wearing and asked to call if I saw anything that could help. Later that night, some 5 hours after the robbery, a car pulled up and a young man jumped out to use the payphone in front of the store. Remember, this was 2005, payphones were still a thing then. Normally I wouldn't have thought twice about it, except that the clothes this kid, 16, 70 year old or so, was wearing matched the description of the clothing of one of the robbers. So I called police dispatch, advised them of what I had seen and the direction the car went when they exited the parking lot. Not 30 seconds later a police car went flying by in the direction the suspect's car had gone. Full light bar going but no siren as it was about 3 in the morning. I learned from the police later that morning that they caught up to the car about 4 blocks away from my store and occupants of the car were the robbers. How did they know? Not only did the robbers not stay at home and go into hiding, not only were they using the same car and wearing the same clothes, but they had the money from the robbery in plain sight in the front seat of the car. Like I said in the title, stupid robbers. I got a community service commendation from the police department and the robbers got an all expenses paid trip to the state prison for aggravated robbery and aggravated assault. So those were the stories for today's video. A thumbs up if you like the stories, check out my channel for more videos like this, and I will see you in the next one.